In this video, you will learn how to set up an NFS server on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS server. I will also show you how to mount an NFS file system on the client machine. Now let's get into it. We'll use two servers, running Ubuntu 22.04 as an NFS server and the other on which we'll mount the share. The server and the client should be able to communicate with each other over a private network and configure the server firewall to allow traffic on port 2049, only from trusted sources, in this case the Ubuntu client. The first step is to set up the NFS server. We'll install the necessary packages, create and export the NFS directories, and configure the firewall. SSH to your NFS server and run apt update. This will refresh your local package index and should be done before beginning any installations. Note I'm running every command as root. You can run sudo as your user if you like. Then, install the NFS kernel server package by running apt-y install NFS kernel server. The NFS kernel server package provides the necessary tools and services to set up an NFS server on a Linux machine and share files over the network. Once the installation is completed, the NFS service will start automatically. We can verify this by running systemctl status NFS hyphen server. As you can see, the service is in exited state. This means that the NFS service was started, has completed its main process, and has exited. The service has failed to run its main process due to an error here, resulting in the exited state. We need to create this file for the service to run successfully. But before we create the export file, we need to create the shared directories. In this example, we'll set the slash exports directory as NFS root. Let's create that directory using the command mkdir slash exports. Then we will need to create a directory we want to share with the client. In this case, the backup shared directory. We can create this by running mkdir slash export slash backups. Next, we will edit the slash etc slash exports configuration file. Here, we can configure which directories we're sharing and who can access them. Each share has its own line in the file. The location of the share on the server machine is the first item on that line. Then the host name or the IP address of the client, or range of IP addresses can also be listed. Then, the shares rules in a series of parentheses directly after the IP address. The RW stands for read and write, which means the users accessing this folder can both read the files and write new files to it. Sync it means that changes to the files in the folder are synchronized immediately. When a directory is shared over a network, the system checks each subfolder within the exported folder to see if there are any additional access restrictions or permissions for those subfolders. This process is known as subtree checking. By including no underscore subtree underscore check, it is telling the system to skip this process and not check the subfolders for any additional access control information. This speed up the process of accessing the exported backup folder, as the system does not have to check every subfolder for additional access control information. Now save the file and export the shares. Run export fs hyphen ar. If there are any errors or warnings, they will be shown on the terminal as you can see here. You need to run the command each time you modify the slash etc slash exports file. To view the current active exports and their state, we can use the command export fs hyphen v. The output will include all shares with their options. As you can see there are also options that we haven't defined in the slash etc slash exports file. Those are default options and if you want to change them you'll need to explicitly set those options. Next step is to adjust the firewall on the NFS server. Instead of enabling traffic from just anywhere, the best practice is to be specific. This rule allows incoming traffic from only the specified IP address of 192.168.0.127 to reach any destination IP address on the NFS port. All other incoming traffic from other IP addresses will be blocked by the firewall. At this point, we have set up an NFS server on our Ubuntu server. We can now move to the next step and configure the clients and connect to the NFS server. The first thing we need to do is install the NFS packages on our Ubuntu client. Use the command apt-y install nfs-common. With the package installed, we'll be able to mount the NFS share. But first, we need to create new directories for the mount points. We can use the command mkdir slash mnt slash backups. Now, we can try to mount the NFS share. To mount the share directory on the mount point, use the following command. Mount 192.168.0.126 
which is the IP address of the NFS server, followed by a colon, followed by slash exports slash backups, then the mount point slash MNT slash backups. Verify that the remote file systems are mounted successfully using either the mount or the F command. We will use the F command for this example. To make the mounts permanent on reboot, edit the slash etc slash fstub file and add the following lines. This means that the NFS share is located at 192.168.0.126 slash exports slash backups and is being mounted on the local file system at slash mnt slash backups. The line contains several options that control the behavior of the NFS mount. Auto, this option means the NFS share will be mounted automatically at boot time. No fail, this option means that the boot process will not be stopped if the NFS share cannot be mounted. No time, this option means that the access time of the files on the NFS share will not be updated, which can improve performance. No lock, this option means that file locks will not be used on the NFS share, which can also improve performance. TCP, this option means that the NFS connection will use the TCP protocol. AC time O equals 1800, this option sets the attribute cache timeout to 1800 seconds or 30 minutes. Underscore net dev, this option indicates that the NFS share should be mounted after the network has been fully initialized. The final two values are the dump and FSCK options, which control the behavior of the dump and FSCK utilities. A value of zero means that these utilities will not be used for this NFS mount. After saving the file, the client will automatically mount the remote partitions at boot. That's all for now. Drop me your feedback and comments below. If this video helped you in any way, please like share and subscribe. Thank you.